to my dearest, beloved divine friends and families in the raw. This is a third installment, installment of today, the um, Sunday, October 11, 2020. RK's Gyno Free Media in the raw. Now, I did two parts so far, but we can't show it all one night and they watch parties and so on, so it comes in handy later on. I get people to think a little bit. Some people don't have time to read the newspapers. Some people don't get the newspapers and in diaspora and so on. So much people, so many people love the fact that I do these readings. So we have some, some articles here in the Starbrook uh, newspapers. I would like to give you some, some highlights, not the total reading. For example, on the front page, uh, it is saying cops seek to put allegation to Lawrence as elections probe continues, and that will be on page 20. So they are planning to haul in tomorrow Miss uh, Lawrence. I hope Miss Lawrence becomes the opposition leader, and I'm using the opportunity to call upon Mr. Harmon for the allegations he's been making and the delay he's been causing and the frustrations in Parliament and the government and the accusations to affect people's life and conspiracies and so on. I, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan, am saying, I, I have nothing personal against him, so it's not that of biasness. I'm speaking as a, as a, as a commentator analyst, so to say. I think he has, um, outlived his use, useless, his usefulness. I think the gentleman has become useless, uh, at his juncture. And therefore, I would like to suggest, uh, to his people, uh, who didn't vote him in to be the chairman, uh, who voted, uh, Miss Lawrence to be the chairman, that Mr. Harmon should be made to resign his position. The people can do this. He has also put many people in trouble, staying in his home, exciting people to do wrong things. We saw what happened in, 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 five, in, 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 in Region 5 in West Coast Bobbies, the destruction, the rapes, the beatings, the murders, the choppings, the burnings, the arsons, the feeling up, the, the, the more choppings, the more beatings, uh, uh, and so forth. And because of the words he used to, to say to the people that uh, your, your, your reaction was right, so to say. That, and that you have an illegal government to excite the people into more violence. I think Mr. Harmon, whilst in time he might be charged, I do think that he needs to resign his position and calling upon the people of the the, the, this this amazing party calls the People's National Congress that they need to tell him and do things that they have to do to tell him to step down and the right person who was voted as chairman, Miss Lawrence, should become the chairman and the opposition leader in Parliament and, and, and also the leader of the People's National Congress even. But the police wants her because of they say, my understanding is that they're saying that they have uh, certain uh, information and at hand and uh, that she interfered with uh, the allegation and that might have been part of the attempt at the rigging after the votes. So it's going to be an exciting week, exciting time will be coming up and I don't want, want to make any further comment but I have known this lady, I know politics she made, got excited but I've known her always to be a most elegant, a decent and a professional lady but politics had done her its thing to her, and I think what has happened when she saw the clandestine attempts at, at, at manipulation and thievery to to oust her uh, when she's supposed to be the leader of parliament and to make her appointment as chairman, I think it was all a weakened horror because she did involve herself in a peaceful protest. She did involve herself in going and talking to the people that it is not in the DNA of their ancestors or them to hurt innocent people that damage our country's name and reputation overseas. I applaud Lawrence for that. And I think if she does not get the appointment, she needs to do call some, some protest against her party or, and or she needs to form her own political party. And in some way, I am pledging to help her along the line. And I think most people, because she will help her because she has been robbed of her right to be the leader of the opposition. But let's see what happened to police and her. Um, maybe she should volunteer to become state's witness and pull all of them down. Volunteer to become state witness, sister.
and pull all of them down for what they had done to you and to this country as well. And Batavia man took sudden turn for the worse after mild COVID-19 symptoms. So the gentleman had uh, symptoms, he went, they tested him, and then he suddenly turned to the worse and he died. A warning everybody to please wear your masks right, sanitize properly. DDL has one of the best chemicals made of alcohol that is called, um, that is Enveron, good to clean in the environment and for sanitizing people. It is also good. They also have, um, so many other things, but DDL is making a beautiful one. Make sure you have your sanitizing equipment. Your masks properly worn, don't, don't wear it on your heads, don't wear it on your neck, don't put it on your mouth because you could be pulling the coronavirus from where you want to take it off, take it off by the elastic. You feel you're stifling a bit, take it off, go and breathe somewhere, put it on back. And so try, ladies and gentlemen, to protect yourself, not to infect others, and keep the rule and the law. I would suggest to the government to arrest persons and hold them for 48 hours in a school where the family will have to bring their meals to inconvenience and set them out instead of giving them charges and fines due to this hard times, fines are not good, but some inconvenience for two days could do wonders to people. I'm very proud to say that the agreement uh, for the Guyana Suriname bridge will be signed next month between the presidents of Guyana and also of, um, of Suriname. They have already sanctioned it. This is a magnificent, a wonderful, and a powerful reality for the, for the people in the upper country. We always dreamed of the boat, the ferry, the Rosignol uh, ferry to become a bridge. Dr. Jack Dale and his government at that time, which is the PPPC, gave us to us. They cuss it, they abuse it. I challenge them not to go to it. Just like I challenge them as they're cussing the Marriott, take an oath uh, Mr. Ramjatan and Mr. Uh, Ms. Ms. Mr. Nagamutu and Mr. Granger, take a note that you will never visit, you will never visit the Marriott if you win the election. They can never take it. I said, take a note that you will never cross the bridge if you disagree with it. But they can never take it. And this is where comes the stupidity of politics. But we people always dreamed of that. And when it take you 30 seconds or a minute to get across the bridge, when it took four hours or something, a whole day, to cross with the boats. Dr. Barajak, they will have to be blessed for having caught it up and for putting that bridge together to help us, the people in the quarantine, the country, the people coming from Suriname, French Guyana, and everywhere else, friends and families, brothers and sisters. So I'll give you a few touches here. Um, Guyana Suriname teams visit landing sites for the quarantine bridge on two sides where they will land. They'll land on their side, they'll land on our side. And this is a great thing for Guyana, for commerce, industry, and business. They say this should take about five years, but uh, His Excellency President Dr. Irfan Ali has said that he intend to make it not three years. Same thing with the bridge across the Demerara River. Three years. Yes. And he will do it. And we must bless him. And we must work with him. And we must tell any party or anyone uh, jealous in power, in the opposition or whatever, stay quiet and let the country prosper and develop. Minister of Public Works, Juan Ejil, and his Suriname counterpart, Dr. Riyad Noor Mohammed, yesterday visited the proposed sites for the landing of a planned bridge across the Quarantina River, where they planted flags to signify the commitment to, to the projects. My friend, my brother, I'm proud of him. Bishop Wanajil, Minister of Public Works, proud of him, wonderful powerhouse of politics and humanity in this country. And so I, I'll just keep several paragraphs. With the expected increase in trade and traffic, the bridge would, would bring, Ejil said the minister, Agil said the minister said persons can expect major infrastructural development on Long Island, such as hotels and shopping malls, because people will be crossing. Things will be happening. I'm so happy I have two pieces of two lots of land in in, in, in the upper quarantine. Um, a lot of things could happen there. Prime, perfectly 
positioned lots of land. Friends and families, brothers and sisters, indeed, yes. I made wise investments. My hands moved by God. Thank you, Lord. While I would not live very long, I do have uh, descendants, children of mine, and a corporation who might manage it all. So, a lot of things will be happening there. Edgel also disclosed that the government of Guyana will host the Suriname's delegation next week to discuss plans going forward. I will rest on that, dear ladies and gentlemen, just to tickle your imagination. I don't have to read it all to you. But let's wish our president and our government prosperity and success. And you who are supporters of the opposition, yes, you can love them. You can vote for them. You can do what you want to them. But tell them, don't stymie the development of Guyana and the creation of opportunities. Don't do that to our country. We are one people. We are one Guyanese nation, regardless of ethnic makeup. Guyana must come first. We, the people, must come first with our country. Let us talk about North Korea unveils monster new intercontinental ballistic missile at a parade. Oh, my God. It is said they have economic problem, food problem, but this man keep on manufacturing all these missiles and atomic bombs. Um, South North Korea unveiled the previously unseen intercontinental intercontinental ballistic missiles at an unprecedented uh, pre-dawn military parade yesterday that showcased the country's long-range weapons for the first time in two years. Well, I think they have to show that they are strong. Otherwise, other countries might um, eat them up. But um, we know the country have difficulties, but I understand also that people love their leaders. So I don't know what is the way forward. Are we going to go destroy Anyone will want to destroy those people we have life and country. They we have this, they have destroyed um, um, Libya. Look at Libya today, a land of warlords, which is perfectly controlled. So many benefits for the people. They never pay taxes. They got free houses. They got married. They got twenty five thousand dollars to start free college. You fall sick if the if the country can't give you medicine. They send you into India. They put you into five star hotels. And look what it has become today: a pariah. What look at look at Iraq. So they have to be careful. Um, I'm skipping a line. This missile is a monster, said Melissa Han Hanham, Deputy Director of the Open Nuclear Network. Also displayed were the Hausang 15, which is the longest range missile ever tested by North Korea, and what appeared to be a new submarine launched ballistic missile. Oh my god. But you know, we're spending all these money, it's not only them, but so many countries in the world, only on weapons. If they do away with, with making any new weapons for a year, they could end poverty in the world, I think. End poverty in the world. They already have all, so stop anymore and just put the money to helping humanity to grow and develop and housing and better hospitals and schools around the world. And work and spend some to save the environment. Skipping another, the last paragraph. Uh, the U.S. official said Washington was holding fast to four commitments made by Trump and Kim at a historic meeting in June of that year, including a pledge by Pyong, Pyongyang to work toward complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So they had um, some arrangement, and they are all sticking to that arrangement. That's fine, but I'm calling upon the nations that have such weapons and keep on making weapons and sell weapons to like into Africa on both sides. They're selling weapons to both sides so they can make money and and, and as a result of which you have um, illegal gold mining and they're using children as well to, to fight and to kill and kidnapping people, children and daughters and sons and then you're using the kids as slave labor to take for gold. Oh my God, man. We need to end all of this and help to develop a great humanity. Um... A U.S.-based Guyanese, this is page 11 of, of, of Starbrick News. My God, this is terrible. What people do, they destroy people's life, get wealth and money. Such a painful, painful thing, you know. Such a very, very painful thing. 
US-based guy and he sold CAL over cocaine planted in the suitcase, ladies and gentlemen. An innocent man, his whole life has been turned over. Even though the charges were dropped, he can't go anywhere, he can't do anything because it shows up in Google and it shows up everywhere he goes, he's been searched over and over because it is in the system. For example, one time my wife took mangoes for my daughter who was pregnant in the, many years ago through Orlando. And the other day when she went back to Orlando, they had caught her with mangoes and they stopped her and they were searching in and out and then they asked her, do you have any mangoes? I said, no, but why are you asking? I said, because your record show you came here with mangoes 10 years ago. Oh no, it wasn't 10 years, 12 years ago. Can you imagine that, friends and families? I think this poor young man, man, Mr. Sim Simeon Wilson. Uh, U.S.-based Guyanese man is suing Caribbean airline after two kilos of cocaine were planted in his suitcase while in the custody of the airline two years ago. The New York Post has reported that Simeon Wilson, 50, had spent a week in Guyana on October 2018 celebrating his father's birthday. According to the lawsuit, Wilson picked up his bag from the luggage carousel at JFK Airport in New York over the flight. He didn't notice that someone had secured a necktie around the handle. It was stated that there was no necktie on the suitcase when Wilson checked it in with Caribbean Airlines at the Chetty Jagan International Airport. He was subsequently arrested by customs agents after the cocaine which was contained in the two bags was found inside the suitcase. My God, imagine that feeling there. Court documents claim that Wilson had never touched, handled, sold, or, or even seen drugs in his life and didn't put them in his own suitcase. Prosecutors eventually dropped charges. Thank God. Nice young man, Simeon Wilson, is so unfair. Prosecutors eventually dropped charges against Wilson after determining that his bag had been tampered with while in the sole custody of Caribbean Airlines. By the time that his family had bailed him out of jail, however, his reputation in Queens, New York, Guyanese community had been ruined and he lost his job. Oh my God, to lose a job in America and in the Guyanese community and we know how Queens is with all these Guyanese people here, you know. The report added that to date, Wilson is frequently pulled aside by customs at airports because his name is flagged and now he has to carry proof that his case was dropped. I travel with my two hands. I don't bring no suitcase at all. Nobody can screw with me anymore, he told the Post. He is now accusing the airline of negligence. You go out for a vacation. You don't expect anybody to go and tamper with your bag. What Mr. Wilson went through was a terrible ordeal and he should be compensated for the airline's negligence and his lawyer, Amy Robinson. I think he should. He must. And properly so too. She cited the 2012 case of Roger Levens, somebody else, who sued Delta Airlines after someone allegedly inserted drugs into his bag after he handed it to the airline. It is particularly outrageous since this has been happened to other passengers before he said, Wilson is seeking unspecified damages. Caribbean Airlines has, has declined comment, the report said. That poor guy, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to show you, show you the gentleman. Poor guy, you can see this is a decent, a good son, you know, of uh, Guyana and now the United States. And the poor young man had to go through this kind of thing due to poor security provided by Caribbean Airlines in Georgetown, Guyana. Uh, it seems that the opposition wants to run the government um, uh, uh, of Guyana, and they're, 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 they're quarreling about Ben, about uh, the rehiring of uh, James Singh uh, as the head of Canu. Well, I say James Singh is a, is a master, a stalwart, a brilliant, a scholar, wonderful young man that I have great respects for and that he is the right person for the job. He was fired and a military man was put in by a military man who likes to be around military people only. And we know how soldiers are not usually the best of peoples in the world. Some, a few, like our Brigadier Mark Phillips. But some of them are in all kinds of skullduggery and deceit, ladies and gentlemen. 
So, Minister Ben defends hiring of Singh to head the Kanu. He says that the COI report had recommended complete revamping of the unit. Minister of Home Affairs, Robson Ben, has defending the rehiring of Custom Anti-Narcotics Unit Director James Singh, but has, but has blocked him from speaking on the Commission of Inquiry, which led to his termination from the position under the former APNU AFC government. I am satisfied of the actions he took, Ben told Sunday Starbrook yesterday when contacted and said he was glad to work with Singh, whom he found to be very professional. I can wish to concur. Singh, like his father, um, uh, Brigadier Chief of Staff Joe Singh, totally professional people. Congratulations, um, Government of Guyana and Mr. Robson Ben. Asked if Singh will be given clear clearance by him to speak on the COI findings, uh, Ben said no, press on his decision for non-clearance to speak. He said that he did not want the newspaper to badger Singh with questions. Um, let the man do his job. Um, sometimes some commissions of inquiry, especially when it's conducted and, and, and start, started up by soldiers, and everything was soldier, 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 PS soldier, Soldier, um, head of the hospital, soldier, REOs, soldier, everything, everywhere, as if you had a coup, a coup data. And then soldier decided that they want an investigation to put in a soldier to run the canoe. Um, I am, um, agreeing with, uh, Minister Ben, and I wish to welcome James Singh. It is confirmed that Guyana's airport is to be reopened, ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency President uh, Dr. Ira Farali gave uh, a middle page a comment in most newspapers about it. I've given the most careful consideration of the due consultation with many stakeholders, including the Ministers of Public Works and Health and the Civil Aviation Authority to re reopen the two international airports, the Teddy Jagan International Airport and the Eugene F. Coraya International Airport to commercial operations. Our country remains, along with the rest of the world, under the threat of COVID-19 pandemic. We must uh, learn to both live with it and deal with it. We are doing everything within our means and with the assistance of the international community to bring it under control. In the meantime, however, we must be able to keep our economy functioning and growing. We must be able to put our country back to work. His Excellency President Dr. Irfan Ali says, and that's what I've been saying all the time, I had an article recently in which I said the economy will flatten out and we could end up in bankruptcy as the entire world could collapse, ladies and gentlemen. We have to learn to live with this thing and to protect ourselves and to prosecute and hold for at least 48 hours all those who do not observe the social distancing, the mask wearing and the sanitizing and uh, hold them in schools or wherever you call them stockades. Humbug them, let them sweat a little bit. And then they will learn to follow the law. I'm satisfied in the advice of the ministers and director general of civil aviation, civil aviation that both of our airports are fully prepared and ready to operate in a manner that will ensure the safety of all who work there and pass through them. Friends and families, I'll end with that there. We got the message already. God bless our president and Guyana. A great and mighty son of Guyana, ladies and gentlemen. Brigadier Prime Minister Mark Phillips, here is the gentleman, moving like t with thunder and lightning to help this country, leads mask distribution exercise at Stabrook Market. As part of the government's uh, recently launched Operation Covi Curb, which has been so initiated to ensure compliance with the measures to stem the transmission of COVID-19, Prime Minister Mark Phillips yesterday carried out a mask distribution exercise in the Stabrook market. Uh, our, um, our mayor also 
uh, Pandit Umbra Chinarayan did some of that earlier, even though he was cursed and abused. But here I am supporting again now our pres our Prime Minister for doing just that. During the exercise, Phillips, who was accompanied by Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hugh Todd, interacted with members of the public about COVID-19. So you got the message, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I need to read the entire article. I see here, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in, in, in the Starbuck News, Esau and Jacob residents get portable water supply. This is truly wonderful. I don't need to read it. And the people are happy. They never had water in their entire existence. And within the two months of taking power, so many people throughout the country, I can't even call the amount of names that have been given water and, and now electricity going in within a few days more from now to ensure that they can have a, not, a normal life in modern civilization. Congratulations to you, President Dr. Irfan Ali, uh, Prime Minister Mark Phillips, Vice, Pres Vice President uh, Dr. Dr. Barra Jagdeo uh, and the Cabinet. Thank you all for looking after the needs of your people. And I want to close this segment with this, ladies and gentlemen. Something horrific happened uh, last night uh, by the Demerara, by the west coast of Demerara, the Harbour Bridge. A soldier arrested for assault on cops. We, most of us must have seen that on Facebook. The beating up of a policeman, a young policeman who was telling a guy, you're boring, you need to go back in line. Beat the police up, throw him away like nothing and thinking something because he's a soldier he can do what he want this is ridiculous and we need maximum jail and penalty for this man no acceptance of any form of compensation a large corporal attached to the guy in the police force coast guard has been arrested after he's assaulted a police officer on duty at the western end of the Demerara Harbour Bridge. The incident which occurred around 8 p.m. on Friday was recorded by two other motorists who shared it on, on social media. According to the Guyana Police Force Constable 24030 Wilson, who was conducting anti-crime patrols duties at the Demerara Harbour Bridge, observed a dark grey car driven by GDF Lance Corporal trying to change the lane. The action of the soldier caused the congestion of traffic the police said as a result, Constable Wilson approached the GDF rank, told him of the offence committed and instructed him to pull to the corner of the road. As a result of this, the police said the soldier became annoyed, exited the vehicle and allegedly chucked the Constable Wilson. Constable Wilson uh, then warned the driver about his behaviour and asked him to desist, which he ignored and proceeded to further assault uh, the Constable by choking him and dealing him several cuffs about his face and body, causing him to receive injuries, the police explained. Constable Wilson, with the assistance of other ranks, subsequently arrested the soldier, who remained in custody up to yesterday. Constable Wilson was taken to the West Demerara Regional Hospital, where he was treated and then discharged, the police said. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is so horrific, you know. People don't respect I saw a policeman's uniform. A policeman who is sacrificing as a law enforcement officer to maintain law and order is kind of going down the drain for a soldier to do this. He needs to be discharged. He needs to get maximum jail and more jail and a record forever. And the United States Embassy and everywhere else need to know so that he cannot travel any country in the world, including Europe. This is, this, this is horrific that you're going to beat a policeman for telling you to pull into the corner. This is uncivilized. This is like an uncivilized society. But thank God, our law enforcement officers, our prosecutors, and everything is working and shows that our system works. So we bless our system and be happy about it, that our system works. So friends and families, for your information, your wisdom, your knowledge in the reading of this in the raw RK is guy in the free media. Your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan, I'm happy to have presented this presentation to you. God bless you. God bless our country. Let us work for goodwill, peace, harmony. Let's work with the police. Let us work with each other across the, our ethnic divide, our racial divide, to bring love and harmony as we always used to be, as one human family under God, one people, ladies and gentlemen. We must love each other and live in goodwill and joy. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Oshinkan, saying thank you. 
And farewell, friends, and thank you for tuning in and sharing this with your friends and family. Check us on YouTube, tell them about it, RK's Guy on a Free Media, YouTube and Facebook.